Hello and welcome to Fuse TV today, a new light topical programme that looks at what Fuse TV has in store for the next semester. So coming up on today's programme, we're going to have a chat with the new committee of the Women in Media Conference of 2021. We're also going to have a chat with those involved with our Fuse live sessions, which you'll be able to see coming out in a few weeks time. And at the end of the programme, we'll be talking to Tegwin, who is the star of our new comedy programme, Tea Time with Tegs. That's all still to come today. But first, we're going to get a catch up with the headlines with Pippa. Hello, I'm Pippa and you're watching the latest news updates with Fuse News. Today's top stories are Matt Hancock has confirmed a new enhanced testing regime for international travellers from Monday. Those returning from red list countries will be required to pay a £1,750 fine for their testing, transport and hotel quarantine. Travellers will be expected to quarantine for a set time period and during this time take two COVID tests. For those who break the rules, fines of up to £10,000 and 10 year jail sentences have been warned. Following this, in parts of Manchester, surge testing will be introduced in response to four cases of the Kent variant being confirmed in separate households. Testing will begin on Tuesday and will take place in Fallowfield, Hume, Mossside and Wardley Range District. The testing will target people living in the testing boundary as opposed to those who have expressed symptoms. Students at the University of Manchester will vote in March on a referendum of no confidence on President Nancy Rothwell and senior members of staff at the university. In almost 200 years of UOM history, this is the first event of its kind and has been described as historic and unprecedented. Voting will begin on the 8th of March until the 11th, with the published results expected to be out on the 12th. In other news... Weather warnings of snow disruption across the UK persist as temperature readings hit a record low. A reading taken in the Scottish Highlands on Tuesday morning read minus 16.7 degrees, the lowest UK temperature reading in over a decade. A cold weather alert has been issued by Public Health England until Wednesday and travel disruptions have been warned across the country. Nominations for the 2021 students election have begun. During this period, the Student Executive Officer team for 2021-22 to 22 will be elected. This is the University of Manchester Student Union's 160th election. Nominations will continue until the 21st of February. Campaigning prep will take place between the 22nd of February and the 7th of March, and voting will be open from the 8th until the 11th of March. This is a chance for students to vote for an exec team that they feel will represent them and their issues. That's all from us today at Fuse News. Tune in on Friday at 11.45 for our weekly news update. Thank you. Thanks for that, Pippa, there. Now we're going to look over some of today's talking points. And I'm bringing in with me now our Head of Entertainment, Rob, and our Assistant Station Manager, Ashwin. Hi guys, hope you're OK. We're going to start off there with something that um, Pippa did mention and that that there is a new COVID variant in the city of Manchester. I, I do believe at the moment that it is isolated to certain postcodes. I'm not sure, I'll start with you, Rob, whether you're affected by that and maybe what you think about it. Uh, so yeah, I believe it's M14 postcodes and around like the Fallowfield area. So last year I would have been affected by that, but this year I'm just outside the Catherine area. Um, but on the surface, it's not being properly implemented yet and we haven't witnessed whether it's gonna actually work, but it seems like a good thing. Uh, since they're going to be testing asymptomatic people and going house to house and getting as many people tested as possible just to keep track of all variants i don't keep track of variants i can't keep up with them there's too many but it, it seems like a good thing on the surface and to get as many people tested as possible that that seems like a good thing to me yeah i mean ashwin is that the same for you are you affected or not just the same as rob last year i would have been affected but this year i'm kind of safe from it uh and I do agree, the surge testing is really good because I feel like you, it would bring out 
people for, who are asymptomatic as well and or people who have the new variant. And um, on the comic side, I do I can see how these weird different additions and variants um, have effects like the Brazil one, the South Africa one, and now we have our own too. And <laughs> it is pretty funny to me. If I'm looking at the brighter side of things. Yeah, I mean, obviously the worry is with this one is whether, then whether our vaccines will be uh, will be able to help with that. Moving on from that, similar news to, um, to that, sticking with coronavirus, which I think has been the bane of everyone's lives for the last year, but uh, definitely one of the top talking points for the last year, is now that the government's introducing £10,000 fines for people who break those um, travel restrictions that are currently in place. Um, I know we were discussing this before we came on air, Rob. What do you think about that? And I think you said mentioned that in line with the rest of the government policy, it didn't really make sense. Yeah, so after reading the few news articles that have been written so far since that announcement, uh, I didn't really like could exactly understand who was going to be fined or if the they also threatened 10 year jail sentences and I was trying to figure out if the 10 year jail sentence was just a replacement for the fine if you can afford it in in my mind that started to raise questions over like class differences and the idea that if you can afford a fine um you can pay it so when I saw this I was thinking that the people who are going to be traveling internationally and the people who have been able to make their way around rules by paying off fines and such are going to continue to do so with this if 10k means nothing to them yeah i mean ashwin you yourself are an international student how do you think like how do you feel about that um yeah i came to the uk and at the time when russia was a listed country from uh, when when i arrived here i quarantined for two weeks but i didn't have to stay at a hotel and i'm at a point in my life financially where I'm dependent on my parents and business hasn't been going so well. So it, as Rob said, these class differences are starting to come out. Obviously I'm very privileged in what I have and the fact that I was able to come back, but it, but if, if this was the case, I wouldn't have come back to the UK and I would have spent my final year in Russia, which is not ideal. Yeah. Yeah. It is, it is a shame. And it's, like like Rob mentioned, it is a shame that it's then brought up onto people who can maybe afford it and who, who can't as well. Moving on to a bit of lighter news. Well, I say lighter news. It's a bit controversial, I think. So Ocado, um, obviously the uh, food delivery service, has said they don't think that they, took, they do think that shopping has changed for good in the fact that they don't think we're going to return to supermarkets once the pandemic's over. I mean... Again, Rob, we were talking about this beforehand, and you were saying, like, yes, they can say it because they don't have a physical shop you can go to. But when you try and book a slot for, say, another supermarket chain, you're not necessarily going to get it. And people are still going to the shops. People people are still wanting to go out. And I know I was reading the other day, they said that they think people are just going to go back to the shops for the sake of the fact they can now go back to the shops because they've wanted to for so long. Um, so yeah, Rob, I'll start with you. What do you think on that one coming from Ocado? Uh So I think it sounds like a good thing for them to say for their shareholders to hear, but uh, evidence from when we came out of our first lockdown last summer, behind the pubs, the first thing people did was go like run around the shops, but people enjoy going to the shops. And currently the shops are still as busy as ever. Uh, it's only, uh, it's probably good that there's more of like a logistic, like uh, strong sort of thing that uh, companies have put into for vulnerable people and people who can't make it to the shops. But for normal people, there's not enough slots for them to book on to get a home delivery or there's not everything they need. Or it's the only one, beside exercise, it's the only time you can actually leave the house. So I, I really don't think that it's changed forever ever or any, anything's really going to be different, especially when restrictions have ended. People are just going to race around the shops like usual. Yeah, and Ashram, what do you think about that one as well? Because obviously, I know for you, you just said that you had a quarantine for two weeks when you came when you came back from Russia. Um, so fair enough, it might have worked in the short term to get food delivered, but would it work in the long term? Um, absolutely not. And um, the the fact of the matter is that even when we used to order online, they used to mess up our orders and i'm not talking about takeaways or deliverers i'm talking about legitimate shops over here and so i i remember i had to survive without a toothbrush for five days because i ordered one 
of, of them and it didn't show up and sorry toothpaste and it was it's 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 hectic and at this at the same time as rob said i just believe shopping has become part of our culture and it has been for so long and anywhere you go in the world that's one common thing that you'll find if you find shopping and everyone does it and right now it's more of a pastime and you know you get the house together and you can go out on a shop because that's that's what covid has done to us and i think it it'll, we'll all run back to the shops as soon as they're open and i don't i feel like there's a limit to our laziness even as students we can we're going we're going to go back to the shops no way is everything shifting to online yeah i know you probably told me this time last year that a highlight of my week would be going to the shop with my parents <laughs> i would probably laughed in your face and not believed you and <laughs> um, for that guys um, i'm going to say bye to ashwin now and i'm going to have a bit of a chat with rob about what is coming up uh, this semester for the entertainment team so thanks ashwin so for you rob we've got an interview coming up in a minute with those guys who worked on our fuse live sessions now just give us a broad idea of what what's going on with those kind of programs and how we were originally filming them obviously we can't now due to the new lockdown that we're currently in but what was what what did we get progress with before before we came back after christmas um so last semester i had uh, two fuse members come to me with the idea for like an entertainment idea which is sort of like uh, tiny desk concerts but with the uh, student bands and student artists so i sort of just facilitated that with uh, getting the right people together so I, I got in touch with fuse fm and some of the team over there saw sort of like the music coordinator and the press coordinator and we just sort of organized along with anya the head of the uh, media at su uh, did risk assessments and eventually put on uh did some live sessions with three different artists uh so it was all risk assessed with everyone with masks on uh, we had a multi-camera setup a multiple mic setup and to be honest it was just a good chance for the artists to be able to get out and perform as they haven't been able to do that in over six months at that point and it was just a good chance to for both the music people to get something done for us to get something done so it was completely like multi-beneficial for everyone and it was also just really nice to listen to some music perform live because everyone misses that and it was just a good time to be honest and that should be coming out very soon so yeah so really what this is also about is hoping that we can get more people involved so um just give me a general outline of i mean i know i could say what are you looking for which is we are looking for musicians who would like to yeah. to showcase their work but give an understanding of the setting of how they're gonna work with it which then could perhaps give restrictions to some kinds of fans well when you're performing you don't have to wear masks that's one thing that's a good thing about it um but with the way we had it set up we we had a solo artist set, sat on a stool with a backing track just sitting into a microphone uh then we had uh one guy on a guitar sam sakum who will be in the interview with the uh, two people on guitars behind him then we had a full band with multiple singers so we really can facilitate any kind of performance at all like at all and then anybody that wants to get involved with the fuse side you can either be taught sort of the music set up recording and then mastering or on the fuse tv side you can get involved with filming it and what we did we had one steady tripod camera where you could just film the, the steady shot and just get an idea of around the controls and we had another one on a tripod that we were doing quick pans and zoom ins and stuff so if you want to get your hands on a camera it's a, it's a good opportunity to just like see what it's probably quite close to just a natural gig recording or like a music festival kind of thing but obviously on a, a much smaller scale and yeah so there's a lot of opportunities for anything you can have a go at all three or something if you want yeah that's great um so yeah we are as Rob said that we're looking for whether you want to be uh, on stage or behind the camera with this with this kind of project we are looking for people to get involved um, thanks a lot, Rob, for that. Um, yes. Here is now Rob's interview with the Fuse, the guys from Fuse Live. Um, with the guys that are helping with Fuse Live sessions. So we've got uh, the press coordinator for Fuse FM, Oscar, and we've got the head of music at Fuse FM, Jake, and we've got Sam Seckham, who uh, performed in our first set of live sessions. Should we say hi, guys? Um, so we're going to talk more generally about sort of the state of music and what makes performing music good, and obviously the way things are now you kind of want to get every chance you can to just get out there and perform so personally what do you like about performing just in general well there's there's just no greater feeling than like playing a gig and like especially when you finish the kind of high of it it's just 
there's nothing really compares to it. It's just quite fun, like playing with people you like and yeah. I think all just also just being face to face with people, like uh, it's one thing to be playing music by yourself, but uh, the good thing about live performance is obviously you've got people there to kind of feed back on your energy and also uh, just to make it a good time for everybody. So I'd say that. Yeah. It's nice as well, like when you've made a track and it might be, you might have like produced it or recorded it and then it's on streaming services or whatever. And it's only one way. You can only listen to that the same way for three minutes, or whatever. But of course, when you're live, it's like it comes out in all these different ways. And, um, and what would you say your best gig that you've ever done is? Uh, that's a big question. I would yeah. say I went to Park Life back in when we were in first year. Um, some people put on a, a festival around kind of Owens Park, which we were lucky enough to headline. And it was just such a sunny day. And like to see everyone out and on the field and just enjoying music, and having a great time after it's done. What about you, Sam? <laughs> uh, I reckon the EP launch. But yeah, that was fun. You know, yeah. I think that was the beginning of 2020. Um, literally like 4th of January or something, just after New Year's, uh, when you could still have people in your house. And it was the day of the four track that was released for this EP. And I, I just set up a little like, not even a stage, just like a backdrop and some lights in my house and got loads of friends around. Uh, it's just really nice and homely. Normally gigs are kind of like yeah. exposed. Um, but it was really cozy. Yeah, we had like a similar thing when one of our friends in the summer just did a festival in his garden for charity. And I think those kind of things are the most, are the, have been some of the funnest gigs that I've played personally. Like, I think it's great to go to a venue and stuff, but there's something quite fun about when there's a bit of a DIY vibe going on and it's just, you know, in a garden or in halls or, or whatever. Yeah. So. In terms of performing, was it just like an instant cut off basically? dribbled back where you, you're able to sort of have these chances to perform again and like how do you see uh venues being able to open up back again do you reckon it's going to be sort of like reduced capacity and things i know you're not you musicians not scientists <laughs> uh i mean i don't know i don't know when we'll be able to play again properly but you know the the, the want for live music is there so i think regardless of how things look in the future um there'll be adaptations. Like, I don't think live music is going away forever. I think, you know, even if it's not the same as it was before, uh, they'll still find a way. I mean, I saw recently they've like started developing like a, an idea for like people like going to concerts in like those kind of like, uh, you know, there's like bubbles. Uh, there's like big oh inflatable bubbles. <laughs> like everyone's in a big inflatable bubble. Bowen or Sam, do you want to talk about your experiences with the Fuse Live sessions? I know you haven't seen the final product yet, but as a whole, did you enjoy yeah, it? Yeah, it's nice. It's the first time I've performed in ages. Yeah. It gets to a crowd of like nine people with masks on, but it's still really nice. Like, I think the setup and everything and the effort and work put into the whole set, like the whole, yeah, the stage and the lighting, and even just like the projector at the back. It, it, it's those small things that make a big difference. And I guess it's like, yeah, it's the whole thing of when you're playing live in the moment and like no matter what, what else is going on it's about that like focus in those few minutes it, it helps a huge amount to like engage as much as possible as you can with all that set up it was really really cool yeah um so is there anything else you guys want to mention or you you can plug i've got some um some more recording sessions which, we can... which obviously you, you help film as well yeah. so uh you know, coming up soon. in the foreseeable future. High school day EP yeah. coming soon. Yeah, Sam's second EP coming yeah. in the kind of foreseeable yeah. future. Yeah, being around April. Um, yeah. And then new Monday night special single as well coming very soon. That was the lads there who've helped us with the Fuse live sessions. Another thing from our entertainment team as well, we're also looking for uh, any societies who want to get their name out. Um, to come forward and we would like to have a site spotlight with you uh, and um, broadcast your events, your ideas and what you represent for the university. So please also get in contact with us if you're interested in that. Now the Women in Media Conference happens every year and has been set up by students at Manchester who believe there was a lack of diversity of women in the media industry. Now, Frankie from our Fuse News team met up with this year's committee a couple of weeks ago to see what they had in store for this year's conference. Hi everyone, my name is Frankie from Fuse News and I'm here with Jess, Charlotte and Tilda, the freshly elected chair and deputy chairs of the Women in Media Conference 2021. 
So guys, how are we doing today? Have we all had a good breakfast? <laughs> Brilliant. What have we had? I'm feeling myself off just coffee right now, no breakfast. Oh, yeah, pure <laughs> coffee. <laughs> what about you, Tilda? What are we gone for? I'm the same, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Well, I actually got myself a family pack of Wheaters yesterday, so I've been treating myself. That is absolutely fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, since we're all primed and ready and got sufficient fuel in our bodies, I guess we can make a good start. So um, my first question is for Jess. So for the benefit of those who don't know, could you please give a summary of what the Women in Media Conference is? Yeah, the Women in Media Conference is really a chance for women in journalism, in media field, in the industry to come together and talk about their careers and inspire a whole new cohort of people who want to go into that field. And it's really inspiring. You know, you've got people of all different backgrounds from all different like jobs, works of life everywhere. And you get to come together and learn from them. And yeah, last year it was, again, people got internships, people met some amazing people that they got contacts with, um, made friends with people who want to do media. And it's just a really lovely environment of women speakers inspiring people of any gender can come and listen. But I think because women have been underrepresented in the, in the industry, it's just a really safe, lovely space to celebrate them. That's absolutely awesome. So just to confirm, it's not just targeted at people that identify as women. No, so anyone can come and join the conference and learn from them. It's just the speakers will all be people who identify as women um, uh, or non-binary. Um, and yeah, we will, anyone can come and join in and learn from them because that is the idea to learn from these female journalists who have done really, really cool things. <laughs> no, that sounds absolutely awesome. <laughs> so um, why is the Women in Media Conference so important, do you think? I think um, from the same strand of that, because, you know, you don't often see women in these higher places. And I think that's changed a lot. I think you can see women in, you know, it's main anchor positions, leading large companies, being the lead editor or journalist on things. But it's still not equal. And I think it's still really important that we show mm. how many women are in this field and in the media. I think without the conference, it. I just think it's so important to see these women thriving and it inspires me that I can do it no matter who I am what I'm doing you can reach that because we have people who've just got into the media or people that have been in it the whole lives and you can see that transition on how to get there yourself and I think that's just so important and so inspiring. That is absolutely awesome thank you so much for that. So this is a question for all of you so um, I was wondering what your favourite thing about the Women in Media Conference is. My favourite thing about it, um, last year especially, was interviewing Nicola Thorpe, who I have idolised for ages. I really love her. And she's a journalist. She writes for the Metro. She's a feminist. She was actually one of the people that got heels, kind of like the uniform for women to wear in work band. And she like argued with Pierce Morgan and she's just really cool. And I got the chance to interview her in front of everybody and I loved it. It was just so exciting. So yeah, if anyone can have the opportunity to interview their favourite woman in the media this time, then I'm fully supporting that because it's just so, it's so exciting. Oh, that's lovely. Um, Tilda, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I think it's just, it's just so exciting to see people that live the life you want to live and like these people that have these really cool jobs. It's just it makes it feel like it's more accessible and like actually being able to, like I follow loads of people that I watched last year and now and I'm just like, it just makes it seem more realistic, if that makes sense. So I think that's really cool. That's awesome. Charlotte? Along the same lines, it was just, I was part of the committee last year and it was incredible to work with like loads of other women that were just passionate about elevating other women. But it was so amazing to see myself, like the people actually, getting like seeing women inspiring women because you don't see it you see it all online about let's inspire other women let's like help each other let's elevate and it's really like difficult to like see in person that people are doing that and then yeah seeing these people and some of them were so young like so close to our own ages to see that they were in these positions that we wanted to be it was just so inspiring oh that's absolutely awesome thank you guys get me all get me all inspired myself i'm quite excited for the conference now the great Frankie there talking to the committee from Women in Media and this year they've even managed to grab Laura Koonsberg from the BBC as one of their key speakers. That is, and their event is on the 15th to the 28th of March. It's all 
over online. It's not no longer at the People's History Museum like it was last year, unfortunately, due to the restrictions in place. But I imagine it's still going to be just as amazing as it has been the last few years. You can get your tickets now. Uh, for more information on that, you can follow them on Instagram. That's at WimConMCR. And to see the full interview um, of Frankie with the girls from Women in Media, you can catch that on the Fuse News Instagram. That's at Fuse News underscore U-O-M. Now, to close our show today, comedy is back to Fuse TV. I spoke to Tegwin, who is the star of our new comedy series, Tea Time with Tegs. So, hi, I'm now here with Tegwin from Tea Time with Tegs. Hi, Tegs, you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. You all right? I'm good, thank you. <laughs> um, so, what is the focus on Tea Time with Tegs? Me? No, I'm joking. No, um just having some fun and making some stupid meals um like the pilot we did chicken nugget curry which i don't think is that awful but um, <laughs> just like having some fun in lockdown um and hopefully people enjoy it and learn some some cool cooking tips <laughs> yeah so yeah. what were the main inspirations behind the program what where did you get the ideas from to to create it I don't know. I suppose it's kind of it's making fun of YouTubers, essentially. Um, and that it, that whole like thing of, of like, oh, I'm making dinner. Um, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, what is the process um, and the creation like for the programme? So how do you come up with the ideas, for example, for a chicken nugget curry and not a meal that's probably a bit more contemporary and someone will actually make? um just trying to find something really ridiculous just to like make it's like yeah just really to make fun of youtubers and the and the way that they're like mm, this is what i eat in a day and just to take that kind of idea but make it completely ridiculous i like chicken nugget curry i had it for lunch the next day <laughs> it was a bit burnt <laughs> but i enjoyed the smoky intensity that gave the dish so would you recommend chicken nugget curry for some people yeah, I think it's a great way to get um, vegetables, protein, uh, spice in your life, and rice is good carbs. So, you know, we need that fuel to run. So not only is Tea Times with Tegs a bit of a comedy programme, it's also a nutritional-based <laughs> programme which can offer great health tips. Yeah. Everyone makes fun of students for, like, with, like the food we cook, so... I don't know, chicken nugget curry feels like it could become a staple in so many people's lives. Just like Tea Time with Tex. <laughs> of course, that is great. So who are the audience that you're trying to, to get into watching this programme and who are you, you know, looking to see will interact with it? Um, I'd say mainly talent scouts. Um, agents looking for potential news. Just, yeah, just, just yeah. agents and talent scouts, yeah? Yeah, mainly. Um, I quite like to go into theatre, maybe on, you know, Broadway, but the English version, the West End, <laughs> the, the West End people. Um, no, I don't know. I don't really care. Whoever likes to watch it, be cute. Obviously, the main question is, have you enjoyed making it? Have you enjoyed thinking about it? Have you enjoyed, you know, the amalgamation of your character, really? Because you are just playing a version of yourself. But I don't, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> don't tell me that. <laughs> is it a version of yourself or is it yourself? It's um, who I wish I could be. <laughs> no, because it's just really mean. Two times with days is really mean. But I guess we're all mean inside. So what you're saying is it, that it isn't an amalgamation of yourself, but it is the self that you want to be. Yeah. I enjoy it. It's fun. It, everyone, every, I, I don't know. It's fun to do. I did, um, I used to do lots of drama stuff at school and things like that, but obviously it's not what I want to do in like a, a career. I really miss getting involved in things like this creatively because I can't really dance um, but I do enjoy doing some like drama based things um, so for me I just it's yeah it's fun to get involved in something creative even if it is just making food with my annoying housemate. And that annoying housemate not being me in any way. <laughs> no Neve. <laughs> yeah of course. Um, thank you very much for your time for this interview. Um, and yeah, so Tea Time with Tegs is hopefully out. In and you can link, link my details below if anyone wants to get in contact for future projects. Any talent scouts out there. Yeah. Of details will be linked below or up here. <laughs> 
take them in there from our new show, Tea Time with Tags, which should be coming out in March, hopefully. That is all for today. I thank you for watching. You can catch us again on Thursday live at 5. Again, that's Fuse TV today on Thursday at 5, uh, where we'll be talking about that day's talking points and talking to more people who are involved with Fuse TV this semester. You can find us on Facebook at Fuse TV Manchester. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Fuse TV Your M. Thank you. Thank you.